Henry Burgos, Maryland gun owner, and uh, very concerned with, th there's something that, of course, most civilians don't agree with, with uh, how the government works, and of course, that is that once the choice is made, um, it's kind of like the, the tsunami effect. You know, whether it being right or wrong, once they've made the choice, it doesn't really matter if it's the right choice or the wrong choice, they're going to go ahead with what they believe. And of course, this being from taking away the the freedom to, to have what was considered an assault rifle, because anything with a mag can be considered an assault. It's not actually the rifle that makes it an assault. Uh, what was thought was that the AK-47 was created as an assault weapon because they were going to be assaulting, like coming forward, firing their weapons and assaulting the enemy. Now, you can do that with a pistol. As long as you're running forward and firing, you're assaulting an area. And, of course, that's something that most people didn't understand because there's different techniques to owning a firearm and dealing with a firearm and dealing with a situation such as, you know, home invasion or hostage takeovers or something like that when it's, it's or, you know, the way that they assaulted Osama's house. It was a technique to it. You just don't do it at four or five in the evening when the sun is out. You got to do it early in the morning. There's times and, and styles and different ways of going at it. When you're carrying a firearm, I carried a firearm for almost 18 years in the pawn shop business, and in those 18 years, I pulled my weapon six times. Uh, never had to fire it on a person. Thank God Almighty I didn't have to. But of course, it was a different procedure. I'm not a police officer, so it wasn't that I was sitting there yelling, on the floor, or freeze. I'm a civilian, so I would try to say the proper things like, please don't make me kill you. Or I will I will fire on you. Please get your hands from behind your back or put the weapon on the floor or I will fire on you. There was different ways of going at it, which is what most people are very ignorant or just you can't even say ignorant because it, yeah, I mean, you're just dumb. But it's just you don't know. You don't know. And if you don't understand, then you have fear and you're scared. And me being a God fearing man. The only thing I fear is God. Stick, knife, sword, fire. All I fear is God. I don't fear to go outside. I don't fear to go hang out. I tell people, you know, why don't you go out? And well, you know, the, the, the days are getting crazy. You know, the days have always been crazy. Can you imagine during World War II going out in Germany or going out in Britain and getting bombed? I mean, then at any time you could have looked at it like it was the end of the world if that's the aspect that you're taking. But I want to know if these certain weapons are being taken away from us because people don't understand that a bullet from a rifle could go through a wall just the same way a 357 or a 44 Magnum can. There is the topic of can you stop death? Not natural death. You know, that's up to God. If you take away firearms, then there's bricks rocks. People used to use them. I mean, Goliath died from a rock and the guy swinging it, all right? David swung uh, from a sling and killed him. These are the situations that, that bother me and the questions I ask as an American civilian. Because if you could take away the weapons um, that are used to protect ourselves, which is usually the same weapon that is that the, the enemy uses to kill somebody, because if it's not um, a firearm, it's a, a knife, I mean, then after that you would have just a lot of knifings because people are still going to die people have been dying before you and I and after you and I uh, before the Bible after the Bible it's just something that is impossible for me to see in, in, in the abundance of people that there are that once the government makes a choice to change something you change it for us civilians you don't really change it for the criminal. In Maryland, you can only have the 10 rounds in your, in, your, in your mag, in your clip, in your firearm. So let's just say that I'm in my house and I'm trying to protect my house from a burglar coming in the house and I only have 10 rounds. Do you honestly think that the burglar follows the law of having 10 rounds in his gun? 
he's going to try to go find a clip that has over 150. I mean, while you're sitting there trying to put another 10 rounds in your gun to protect yourself, because death only takes like that, all right? Somebody comes in the house and shoots you, it's instantaneous. It's you're going to die, all right? Um, there is no, no, you know, oh, let's, we're going to wait for, for the police officers to show up or anything like that. They're going to come. You'll probably be dead by the, con by the time they come. But they'll be there. They'll be alive and well. And you'll just be another thought or a memory. And that's what the soul and, and what's, what's tough on me to understand, which I don't have to understand it. I do already. You'll never hear me say, I don't know. I already know. It's pretty basic. I mean, it's life. It's waking up. If God wants you today... He's going to take you. Whether you have a bulletproof vest, your seatbelt on as tight as possible, when it's your time to go, it is your time to go. And that's just the way it is. And that I got from being a hard-headed kid and, and, and being friends with military and my family's uh, uh, Marines and my youngest sisters in the Air Force and friends that I have from uh, for years are police officers and deputy and sheriffs. And, of course, from the aspect of having friends who were on the other side of that the criminal side of that and and they would always uh there was always the mature ones who've been through it and understood that it doesn't matter when it's your time to go if you have whatever type of protection you have you could be in a bunker they'll find a bunker buster to come and get you and it's done and that's it but but you have the right to protect yourself and you have the right not to be a bully or anything. I own an AR-15. I've owned AKs, I've owned rifles, shotguns. I don't want to go kill anybody. I want to protect what's there in my, in my area, in my house, in whatever area I can. You know, I mean, if you ever seen the first 48, there was a gentleman in Florida, because Florida's a carry state, who got killed trying to protect his neighbors. They were getting robbed by three guys. And he had a 45 and they had AR-15s and shotguns and a nine millimeter. I mean, sometimes the battle is just too much to handle and to deal with. But, uh, but you know, I think that episode of First 48 was love thy neighbor. Then of course there's the other situation of, you know, the Columbine girl. If you want to look at religion, My, uh, the, the girl from Columbine, the guy said, do you believe in God? And she said, yes. And he shot her and killed her right then and then and there. It was her time to go. There was no other way of it. Maybe if she had a firearm, she would have protected herself. But you can't do that in school. Which now they're talking about arming teachers and all that. Which is slightly crazy, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes.